Look, I, I don't know if you feel it. I feel it. I see it in my channel. I see it. People's interest in crypto that's dying out. And, and I'm going to say right now, I'm just going to say this, guys. I made the most money off of this opportunity right now. In this video here, we're going to look at Bitcoin's price, regulation, Binance being attacked. What is the overall sentiment in this cryptocurrency market? I'm going to attack that a question as thorough and as detailed as possible. Keep watching. Towards the end of this video, I'm going to give you guys exact buy points. And when I start looking at this market in more detail, this is not financial advice, but I like to recommend exactly what I'm going to do so that people can have some success themselves and pretty much piggyback the information off of my information. So, I mean, I don't know about you, but like I was talking to my friend and he told me that you probably should just, you know, smash the like button for that. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing to the number one cryptocurrency channel on planet earth i might not be the number one right now but i promise you over a long period of time this effort and hard work will pay off i try to keep integrity honesty and everyone might not like it let's go into some macroeconomics what's happening in the world this is one indicator that's very interesting it's basically showing the ownerships of stocks and like the average household now it's increasing and you might think oh wow there's more investments into the economy or there's more investments into stocks this is a good thing but actually, it's not. It's historically been an indicator for the top of the stock market. And you can see that we passed you know, the dot-com bubble. If you don't know what that is, it's basically tech stocks that were over-evaluated. And it showed as a signal to the top of the market. And we see it higher now. So stocks, crazy. I'm not getting involved. I'm going to do what the minority of people are doing. I'm not going to follow the majority. That's typically how it works. But this was also a very interesting article. It basically compares the M2 monetary supply, which if we come over here, it's basically just showing M2 is a measure of the U.S. money stock that includes the M1 currency and coins held by non-bank public checkable deposits and traveler's checks plus savings deposits. So basically, it's kind of evaluating the money in people's hands and, and not in like debt or traditional finance, right? And it's basically looking at the GDP, gross domestic product, which kind of indicates the growth of the economy. And what it's basically showing is that pre-2000, we actually got more bang for our buck. And this is the yellow dots here, but you can see we're on a decline. The amount of money that passes through people's hands, like you and me, the velocity of this money is falling. We're getting less of it, and it's being acquired by, for example, as you can see here, U.S. Treasury bonds, a.k.a. debt financing. It's corporate buybacks. Pretty much the money is being locked up in, in situations we can't control. And depending on if you believe in modern economic theory or Keynesian economics or if you believe in Austrian economics and supply and demand principles, it just depends on how you, you view it. And a lot of people don't even have the research. And, and I'm in no way, shape or form an expert in any of this. But what I do believe is that when somebody has control over the monetary supply and they, they could do things like this and the velocity of money is falling, the amount of wages we have, which brings me to my next point, this can be skewed. It's very hard to keep up with inflation. And if inflation is diluting the purchasing power of the United States dollar, then how are we going to get rising wages? How are we going to get people to get paid more, right? Which would make it, the only reason this would work is if wages rise, right? If the amount of money people make increases and the cost per goods increases, it's kind of like a wash. And this is how kind of, they're playing with these variables in modern economic theory. Um, and it's really interesting to watch. But basically, guys, look, if, if inflation becomes a bigger problem, it's kind of, if you have United States dollars, if you have, you know, USD and your savings account, you're automatically losing money. And you need to pay attention to that. You need to pay attention to the cost per goods. Things are getting more expensive. I'm pretty sure you could already see that if you're in the United States, right? Things are obviously getting more expensive. Now let's talk about the cryptocurrency markets because this climate is obviously a positive thing. In general, macro conditions, it looks like a positive thing. Like what's happening to cryptocurrencies price? Well, it looks like they might be, I, don't, I wouldn't say attacking it, but I will say they're making moves. On Bitcoin right now, there's a lot of regulation. You can see that Binance got banned from some credit card uh, payment networks. They banned debit or credit cards. You see it over here, suspending deposits from European payment network from Binance. Now, this is really important because you got to understand that other exchanges look at this, right? Other institutional investors that want to buy a large sum, billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, they want to make sure regulation is in favor of their investment decision. That's one of the biggest reasons why these large places will adopt large amounts of crypto. I'm not talking about retail. I'm not talking about 
you know, small movements in price. I'm talking about quantum leaps that you can't even see in charts. You wouldn't be able to distinguish this type of information in charts. Looking at the history of Bitcoin price is pretty much irrelevant in these situations. So I think it's really important to look at regulation, right? And you can see that Binance is being you know, hit from all sides. Now, I think in the short term, it's obviously a bad thing for Bitcoin's price or cryptocurrency in general. But I also think that Binance is a little bit sketchy when it comes to like, for example, you know, 100x leverage or 50x leverage. And I do think that to a certain extent, they need to stop taking advantage of people, right? I've talked about this over and over again. People kind of like put my information on the back burner when I said like leverage is really close to a scam because you know, guys, look at it for yourself. This volatile market's going to wreck a lot of investors, and especially if you don't know what you're doing. But on the contrary, you know, this regulation could be a positive thing because as you can see here, we see some banks adopting it. You can see Bank of America is getting a new research team. You can see specifically Goldman Sachs is close to offering Bitcoin and other digital assets to its wealth management clients, right? You can see Citigroup launching digital. You can see adoption in general, and we usually see this in bear markets. Now, I don't want to, you know, be the Debbie Downer, but I'm just saying, you know, when you see these big organizations and banks moving on crypto, but at the same time, there's regulation and there's a clear dying effect from retail. The average person, I mean, look at over here, Bitcoin's, you know, search term is dying. Ethereum search term is dying. When the average person starts to step out, when we see major institutions step in, this is actually a good sign long term. If you look at, you know, the innovation that happened in DeFi, for example, most of the innovation happens when there's nobody there. It's easier for them to upgrade networks. Um, it's easier for people to move. It's just so much better for growth in general. And we typically see this. We'll see Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies get like 100% adoption, 90% of its hype. That's just the way it works. Bubble pops. But that last 10% is real growth. And this allows for the next hype cycle. There's going to be hype cycles in crypto. That's just the way it works, right? That's why if you think on longer term time perspectives and broaden your horizon in this market, you will typically do much better, okay? So just pay attention to what I'm saying. It's very important, guys. As you can see here, Apple's co-founder, Steve Wozniak, basically claiming Bitcoin is better than gold. If I really think about it, guys, like I don't want to hold gold. I don't want to hold cash. Bitcoin's the safe bet for sure. Visa is increasing their partnerships in the last four months by 43%. You see Jack Dorsey committing to creating a Bitcoin hardware wallet, which brings it back to my thesis of explaining, guys, look, there's regulation, there's things happening. It's going to be short-term volatility. It might even go to Bitcoin going to like 25K, 30K, but it's irrelevant because we see the growth happening before our eyes. So let's go over some price points, what I'm looking to accumulate some altcoins and some Bitcoin at. It's very simple. Bitcoin's price is pretty much dictates everything. So I'm going to look at this primarily. I did see a couple of people saying, you know, all coins are doing really well or something just because some of them have been popping off. Now, I just want to be very clear with everybody. These are isolated scenarios. In my personal opinion, I like to put myself in a trend. I don't see all coin season being a trend right now. For simple fact, if we look at some of the charts, Bitcoin's dominance is increasing. Bitcoin typically does well and downturns of markets and, 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 you know, uncertainty, Bitcoin does well. If you look at the top 100 altcoins versus BTC, we're on a downtrend, guys. I can't say altcoins are going to do really well. I mean, I'm not going to clickbait people. I'm just going to tell you guys the truth. This is the way it works. Um, if we look at the total two, for example, you could see it's on a downtrend as well. Even the total market cap is on a downtrend. But look at the total two is on a downtrend. I don't see it. If you look at ETH versus BTC, ETH is on a downtrend in percentage gains versus BTC. And there's a lot of developments happening. So I wouldn't say that's all coin season just yet. But it's okay because accumulating Bitcoin, you know, it has massive growth too. There's a lot of potential in Bitcoin's price. But if we look at Bitcoin's price, for example, what I'll typically do is I'll buy like Ethereum Bitcoin with my investment, just, you know, trades or whatever the case is. But you know, I'm looking at Bitcoin's actual price. So around this range here, around the 30K range, which is realistic in my personal opinion, we've been trading on this channel. We could come to the bottom of the channel. I'll start accumulating maybe my favorite altcoins, very conservative. Guys, like I'm telling you right now, it's going to be less than like three or four altcoins. I'm not going to get into any of the low market caps in any way, shape or form. At least right now, you want to have a, a defensive investment strategy. It doesn't mean you can't make money. You're going to make more than average, but you're just not going to be able to get, you know, some of the 50, 100 X's. It doesn't happen like that. The way it happens, like I told you in the intro, is you have to get in during the bear market when it's very, it's it's longer term time frames that give you that 50 to 100 X. If you just pay attention, guys. But as you can see here, 30K Bitcoin is the next price level for me. I'll accumulate some Bitcoin. Anything below 30K is great. I think the statistical likelihood of us going past its last all time high in 2017 is highly unlikely, which for Bitcoin specifically is about 20K, as you can see right here. 20K for Bitcoin's price. Um, 
I don't think it's going to go below there. So I think the risk to reward ratio for at least long-term investors, I'm looking at buying Bitcoin, Ethereum around 30K Bitcoin. When Bitcoin gets about 25K, I'll look to accumulate some more, maybe look at some altcoins, depending on what altcoins are doing. If we get to you know 20K Bitcoin, I'll, I'll bet the house. I'll bet a lot of money. Right now, currently, I'm about 25% Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and the rest is cash. And, and I'll start accumulating, like I said, when we get down to these price ranges. Now, are we going to get there? Who knows? I think it's irrelevant. It just depends on how aggressive I want to go and what's the risk to reward ratio. That's pretty much it for me specifically. And I think anything below 30K Bitcoin is a very good risk to reward ratio, considering I do believe Bitcoin is going to hit 100K. And I do think a lot of people believe the same thing. So overall, just to give you guys a brief overview of what we just talked about, number one, market sentiment in the short term looks very bearish. That's just the way it is. Everybody's kind of jumping on board. Retail adoption pretty much died out. People are burned. There's regulation happening. Uncertainty. Institutions don't know if they want to get in during this very transitional time, right? They just don't know if regulation is going to be a positive or negative thing for Bitcoin's price. So I don't see adoption happening at a massive scale, at least right now. Maybe we have some sideways trading action. Maybe we go into a little mini bear market. Whatever the case is, I do think in the short term, it's negative. In the long term, the regulation can cause a lot of positive scenarios for massive adoption in Bitcoin's price. Remember, Bitcoin is already considered property. OK, now when it comes to DeFi, that's a whole nother topic of discussion. You see Binance getting regulated. You see a lot of exchanges having issues. So for a decentralized exchange to prosper in this environment, considering they don't have KYC, it's going to be hard. There's going to be a lot of attacks. I will say that for sure. Now, for Bitcoin, though, um, if you understand what's going on, it's already property. Regulation is in favor of Bitcoin. And, and this is why I'm using this for a lot of my sentiment analysis in general, maybe looking at Bitcoin's price a lot heavier right now because this is the time to do it. But yeah, short-term negative, long-term positive for a lot of regulation. You guys know my buy points. That's it for this video. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Catch you in the next one.